What up friends, Ron here and today we're drawing and sketching cylindrical shapes. What up friends, Ron here, thank you for joining me in another video. So in continuation with my series on drawing three-dimensional shapes, today I decided to tackle uh, cylinders. Now this is a bit of a simpler shape because just the approach for drawing and sketching it is a little easier. Okay, now also in terms of perspective and placing it um, inside a certain area, it's a little easier, although because it's a rounded shape, um, it can have its own challenges, okay? So what we're gonna do is slowly build it up so that you understand the basics of drawing the circular and oval shapes, and then we'll uh, connect everything together, uh, take a look at how to build the cylindrical shape itself. We'll also look at some perspective and finally shading, okay? So it's gonna be maybe for some of you a little easier than the cube, for others it may be a little more challenging, but it's gonna be fun uh, in any case, okay? So let's get started. So let's look at how to draw and sketch cylindrical uh, shapes. Now I mentioned these are a little simpler than uh, cubes and I will explain why. Uh, basically with a cube you have to take into consideration all the different sides but a cylinder is rather simple. So basically you just uh, draw a circle or an oval shape like this one and then if you draw just another one under it and you sort of connect them using two lines that's it, you get a cylindrical shape, okay? Um, so I'm gonna break this down to you, for you in simpler ways just to understand it. So the very basic shape we need to talk about is a circle. Let me zoom in a bit so you'll better see. So let's imagine we're looking at a circle uh, that's just in front of us. It could be a stop sign or something like this. So we get this kind of circle. Now if we were to look at it at an angle, it will get a little uh, squashed, okay? So for example, if you look at a sign, it looks like this, then you have maybe like a, something like this, no entrance. Um, now if you look at it from the side, it may look like that, okay? Now, uh, with circles just turn into ovals and they can be in different shapes. Now, another good way of, of explaining this is imagine you look at a coin. Okay, so if you look at it uh, from, the, from the front, there's probably a drawing here, there's some lettering around it, but if you hold it to the side, uh, it'll turn into an oval and you'll also get to see its sides like this, okay? So this is a coin. Um, and you want to practice translating a round shape into an oval. Because what happens is, if we look at this cylindrical shape just from the top, all we'll see is a circle. Okay, but if we move a bit to the side, we'll actually see these as ovals. Okay, so once you get that, uh, you can simply draw an oval and then draw another oval under that. Simply connect the two. Now they should be uh, equal in size for this uh, example in particular. Uh, and then you connect them with lines, okay? But this is if the cylindrical shape is transparent. If it's not transparent, all it takes is basically an oval. Now you wanna create another partial oval that mimics the shape of this. And I'm not as accurate as I can be, uh, but ba basically like this, and then connect it using two lines, okay? A lot of people make the weird mistake of sort of if they're drawing, and it can be a mug, it can be a soda can, whatever it is. A lot of people make the mistake of uh, drawing the top oval like this, and then with the bottom, they don't know what to do, they just close it up like that. This is not what a cylinder looks like, okay? It's really important that this bottom area really mimics the shape of this, okay? And again, it could be many things. For example, uh, if we play around with the sizes of the top and bottom parts, we can get a mug or something similar. So let me show you. If I create an oval, and let me do this a little slower this time, that's a little larger here, and at the bottom, I use a smaller one. It can be definitely like a mug or a, or just a drink or a cup of coffee. Um, if I indicate this line as well, you can see the, the inside part of it. Okay, if I add some, just sh some uh, light and shadow, you can get a better feeling of what you're looking at. Um, so anyway, this is the basics of drawing a cylinder. Now a cylinder can also be sideways. So for example, uh, it can be one oval here, which is the entrance, and then 
another one like that. Okay, and this could be a pipeline or something like this. Now, this is where things get interesting. So I want to talk to you about perspective for a moment. And perspective, one of the basic, uh, most basic laws is that objects that are closer to us appear to be larger and objects that are farther away from us appear to be smaller. So here we have the two ovals and they're both kind of on equal distance from us. If this is our eye and we're just looking at it like that, the distance, here's our eyelashes, <laughs> uh, the distance from here and here is pretty much similar. But what will happen if, and again, this is our eye, we will look at this cylindrical shape uh, like this. Now what happens is that this one, this entrance is closer than this exit or whatever you want to call it. So what happens is that the circle for this shape becomes larger. And let me show you how that works. So the circle uh, for the part that's closer to us is this size. And the circle that's farther from us will be smaller so maybe let's place it around here okay now if we connect the edges we'll get exactly that a cylindrical shape that's moving towards or away from us okay uh, let me show you once again so let's imagine we're looking at a pipe from the front so we have this entrance sort of uh, the inner side of the pipe we have the back side that's a little slower and smaller and I'm gonna draw it very lightly on purpose and then if we connect the edges we get this sort of a pipe or cylindrical shape okay and this is the the entrance on the other side if I'll darken this up you may better understand this okay and maybe I'll add some shadow here. So basically this is a pipe and this is how we enter and exit it, okay? Through space, so we come from here and we exit from that side, okay? So this is really the basics of it and, and this is all it takes to put this into perspective as well. Okay, so basically one part is larger, one part is smaller. So if you look at a round building from the bottom, uh, you may see something like this if you're at a really extreme angle close to its bottom, okay? You sometimes, and let me add some details just to make it a little easier. Now, some of you, again, may find this uh, harder and some of you may find it easier than the, the, the cube. Uh, I find it harder because for me, it's easier to draw straight lines and sort of easy geometric shapes um, and not rounded lines. But anyway, if you look at a building from the bottom, you may it may look like this, okay? Here are some of the windows, trying to put in some details. Maybe there's an antenna, but you probably won't get to see this uh, from the bottom. If you were to stand at the top or maybe fly a helicopter above it, you'll see it like this. You'll see this is the top and maybe the bottom is like really, um, this is the ground level. Okay, and again, some uh, windows, some other details. Most buildings aren't a perfect uh, circle, so you don't get to see a lot of this, but you may see uh, other creative shapes using uh, circles. But anyway, uh, this one is rather simple. It's just two circles. If you remember with the cube, we had two squares that are identical. So here we don't need to have squares. All we have is the circles. Okay, so this is the, the just a reminder of the cube. And here is the circles. Okay, so one, two connect them and you've got whatever it is you want. Now later on, once you um, you have that uh, going, you can just add a few more details and turn it into um, more complex objects. Like I show you a mug or something like this, or maybe a soda can. So I have this uh, kind of shape here. And with a soda can, you'll have another kind of circle around here that connects these two sides. You'll have the opener. Uh, at the bottom also, you'll have this funny shape. There's like uh, maybe uh, some branding on it, some kind of thing going on here. And this looks a bit more like a can. If it's open, you'll see this thing like that, okay? So uh, just by mastering or learning how to draw that very simple shape, uh, you can build upon it a lot of other things as well. Okay, now one last thing I wanna touch upon is shading. So let me just change the paper and we'll get to that. So, so far I've been using a pen, but now I'm going to use uh, pencils to show you. Um, I'm going to, I want to talk a bit more about shading. So because this is a relatively round shape, what we will get for the most part is very uh, gradual sort of rounded, softer shadows. Okay. And this is important to understand. So let's, let's imagine we have this cylindrical shape. 
light comes from the left. So first off, we're gonna have a cast shadow to this direction and the length and uh, its look will depend on the light source and the angle and many other things. But generally speaking, we have this cast shadow here and we'll have a shadow coming through here. So what will happen is uh, the shadow will start very dark at the right side and will gradually, gradually lighten up and it will end um, depending on the, the actual color and darkness of the uh, cylinder itself. So it may be lighter, it may be darker. Uh, let's darken it up just a little bit more here in this area. Now here's something interesting that's going on. Um, you know what, before that interesting thing, let's just get in that cast shadow just for uh, to get the, the basic impression, okay? Now usually the cast shadow will be darkest close to the base of the object because this is where the least amount of light can reach. So I'm just gonna get that down here and lighten it up the more we move away. This will probably require me to darken some of this shadow as well. And you get the idea. And this can literally be anything, any type of object. Now, depending on what's going on here, uh, the shading is going to be different. So let's imagine, uh, first off, we have this kind of, this kind of a cylindrical shape. Uh, the, the top part is just flat closed, okay? Uh, now, less light can probably reach it. Um, but let's just do a very gentle shading on it like that, okay? So we shaded all of it because just less light can reach here. Or you know what, rather let's, let's lighten it up even more. Uh, maybe even keep it almost white, okay? Because what I want to show you is what happens when it's uh, hollow, okay? So let's say we have that same cylindrical shape here. But this time the inside's hollow. So what we will get essentially is a shadow that's on the opposite direction. So let's, I'm, I'm erasing quite a bit here, I want to get the oval shape to be more, uh, more of a circle, more circular, let's squash let's say. So here we have this oval, um, not the most accurate but that's fine. Um, and this is sort of the opening of the cylinder and this is the bottom. So let's imagine this is hollow. So if light would come from this direction, again, we will get shadows here. But on the other side, or maybe a bit from the top, but on the other side, we will get the opposite because less light can reach this side, okay? So this is important to stress. Um, the, the shadows will come from opposite direction. And this is what will give it the feeling that it's hollow. So I'm gonna shade this right area here and just get it to be slightly gradual. I should probably do this a little uh, more slowly, just to get it a little more accurate, uh, but whatever. Sometimes, some days I, I have a little more patience, some days less patience. Now, generally speaking, because this is all inner, it'll probably be a little darker, uh, generally speaking, more than this part, for example. So this is the darkest, but even the lightest is slightly darker than this. And then you get the impression of of it being hollow. You can add another layer to that and darken from down and to the top a bit more because usually the deeper you go into the hollow shape, the darker it becomes, okay? Now let me show you um, an example of this, but here we have a theoretical flat edge, but usually edges won't be as flat. So let me just show you zoomed in what I mean by that. So this is the top part of the cylindrical shape, whichever shape it is. And I'll just move this a bit, but it's not hollow, okay? You can see it's not flat, sorry. It has some uh, mass to it, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna do it like this. And this edge has a bit of mass to it, okay? And there, there, in that case, you want to be a little more careful with shading. So let's now just reverse the direction of the light and have it from the right, okay? Just for fun. So here, we're going to have a darker section that lights up the more we move to the right. But also, the edge here is important to maintain, okay? Because the edge will, generally speaking, be lighter. So I'm just creating some shadows on the left here. And as I move to the right, I lighten up my touch on the pencil. Just a bit more. And slowly merge it into something like this. Now, of course, we have to fill in all of this area. 
as well. Now, sometimes this area will be a little darker, also over the edge, okay? Um, really depending on the specific light condition, even the, the material this is made of can have influence. But on the other uh, end, inside the cylinder will have a uh, lighter, uh, darker area on the other side, okay? So this is what we wanna get here. So we're starting dark, and the more we move to the left, the more we wanna lighten up on the touch of the pencil, but this time the difference is we're keeping a gap uh, indicating the edges of this thing. Whatever it is, it can be a mug, it can be, you know, anything really. I'm just gonna darken it up all the way through here. And maybe I'll add just a bit more uh, darkness to the bottom and right side, okay? So you can get a bit of better of an impression. This is the edge. Um, and this can again really be anything. I can add just a bit of a handle here and it will turn into a mug, coffee mug, anything like that. Maybe with a bit of shadow under it and some shadow here. Um, so hopefully you get the idea of the cylindrical shape, okay? Now if the top part is flat once again, uh, like we've seen in other examples, it really depends on the light source. So for example, if we have a, a top that's flat here, if light comes from the left, what we will sometimes see depending on the material is that the right side is a little darker, but just, just very gently, a uh, very gentle change. Uh, because especially if this is a, um, a smooth surface, okay? If you have a smooth surface, we will see some gradual change. Um, so anyway, this is it. I hope this makes things clearer and you can now better understand how to uh, sketch and draw cylindrical shapes. Put them also in perspective because if you remember, and I didn't uh, stress this in this video, but this is basically like we've seen with the vanishing points. If you remember, we had a, a, the horizon line, a vanishing point, and then a shape coming out of it. So it's exactly the same with the circles being one larger and one smaller, okay? So this is exactly the same uh, instance. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, go back to my video on drawing a cube in three dimensions um, and you will better understand this, okay? Um, so this is basically it into perspective. This line shouldn't be visible. And there you have like a pipe or something like this, okay? And if you wanna add shading to that, also this angle changes things a bit. So let's say light comes from here. You'll generally see a darker area here on the right. And if this is hollow, again, you will see a stronger shadow on this side, okay? And it really, again, depends on the shape of the, of the cylinder. And it should get darker the more inside it is, the more inner it is, okay? So a lot of the light and, and shadow things really, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, components or criteria that's responsible for them. So you have to kind of uh, figure them out on a case by case basis. Uh, but just generally speaking, uh, hopefully this helps you better understand uh, the idea. So there will be also a cast shadow to this direction. Okay, and hopefully that makes things a little clearer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let me change the angle and wrap it up. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson on the three-dimensional shape of cylinders. Um, I find these very fun. It's just, I think, my natural kind of uh, thing I enjoy the most, just random three-dimensional shapes. This is why I'm so attracted to drawing uh, landscapes and like buildings and stuff like that, like geometrical shapes is something um, I really, really enjoy. So I enjoy teaching this as well. Um, let me know if this is helpful and what else you'd want me to see uh, from these this series um, in the future. I just want to mention that the previous video on cubes didn't get as many views as I expected it to or as I wanted to. So um, definitely check it out, okay? I'm going to put them all in one consolidated playlist. I just think it's really good and it's full of useful information, okay? And the first uh, video about drawing three-dimensional shapes, um, I think did a really good job. So uh, with the cubes also, it's uh, just a shame. I want you all to see this, okay? So check it out, the previous one. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. I'm gonna publish a lot more drawing and sketching videos in the near future. I try to keep some kind of a balance with watercolor because watercolor really occupy my time right now, but still I also wanna touch upon uh, drawing and sketching because it's really important for me. 
Um, and yeah, this is it. So subscribe here, follow me on Instagram and Snapchat as well, especially Instagram. This is where I'm really active as well. Um, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you again in the next video.